sure that they're up current so they don't float out of the, the uh, area that they have marked off there. So Corey, these these uh, particular trains are all done in one certain area that is you permitted for to actually exactly. dump. And the buoy marks the center of the fish haven and there's of course a circle all the way around it. I think it's the southwest section of the circle where we're going to put these subway cars down. But it'll actually, there'll be an oval shape. I don't know if you noticed that boat dropped two buoys out there. And what they'll do is they'll go around those buoys and it almost looks like a shape of a racetrack mm -hmm. when they're done. But they're we in the water so shallow here they can't stack them on top of each other so they need to make sure they land, you know, flat on the bottom so they don't affect the depth here. Right. Like they already get the max force in that crane and the way they go. Hi, I'm Jim Ball. First up today, we're going to show everyone a great new addition to the Chesapeake Bay Light Tower Artificial Reef Area. Today we are part of a crew that is deploying 50 Redbird train cars that makes an excellent addition to the Chesapeake Light Tower Reef Area. Now these train cars have a relief of about 12 feet off of the bottom and can easily be found using a good sonar unit. For some excellent and accurate GPS numbers, giving you exact locations of these underwater train cars, just log on to our GPS page at jimboutdoors.com. Now here to tell you more about today's artificial reef deployment is the head of the Virginia Artificial Reef Program, Mr. Mike Meyer. Well, we're out here at Tower Reef. We're uh, 12 nautical miles off of Virginia Beach. Tower Reef is located immediately southwest of Chesapeake Light Station. Uh, the reef has been here since the late 60s. The state took the permit over from the Tidewater Artificial Reef Association of Virginia. The local folks knew the group. Since that time, we have come out and added everything from tires and concrete to barges to dry docks to army tanks, and today we're out here putting subway cars overboard. We've got a barge load of 50 subway cars from New York City. These are the older cars that they refer to as Redbirds that are being retired, taken offline, and to make room for their replacements. These red birds will provide habitat for fin fish. In other words, they provide a hard surface for fouling organisms to attach that provide food for certain species of fish, this food being black mussels. And they also provide structure that will attract species of fish like tautog and black sea bass. So in this way, these old subway cars are providing habitat to attract fish and basically give them a, a place to live. The artificial reef program has been the state supported side of it has been in existence since 1975. We've got a variety of bay and offshore sites and as I just indicated we've used everything from old tires to concrete slabs to subway cars, barges, army tanks, dry docks, you name it if we can clean it up and we can get it out there and it'll stay put chances are we've used it. The reef sites are written up as part of one of the activities of the Virginia Marine Resources Commission, our uh, umbrella agency. The activities of the reef program can be found on the internet at the state agency website or uh, we come out with the Virginia Angler's Guide. This publication has write-ups of the individual reef sites, descriptions of what's been put overboard and where they've been put. These redbirds were already providing great habitat for both sea bass and tautog only after six months after they were deployed. The Chesapeake Light Tower Reef Area is a virtual Disneyland of underwater structure. For detailed charts of wrecks in the area and a good place to start would be the new underwater side scan sonar chart produced by a company called Sea Search. For chart information as well as many GPS numbers, just log on to our website at jimboutdoors.com. We would like to thank Mr. Mike Meyer and everyone with the Virginia Artificial Reef Program for providing such a huge and diverse reef area just at the entrance of the Chesapeake Bay. This area has some of the best wreck fishing on the East Coast. Now next up, 
we're going out for some springtime rock fishing. I loaded up the boat with Barry from Bucko's Bait and Tackle in Hampton, Virginia, as well as a bunch of my friends from our CBS affiliate in Virginia Beach. Today's bait was live croaker caught on the Hampton Bar. Our plan was to catch a ton of rockfish, then anchor out for the afternoon for some wonderful drum fishing. All I can say is that I wish our drum had cooperated as well as the rockfish did. Head over here. What'd you do with my net? You gonna need my net? Oh, look at that one. Wow, did you see that? It was all, man. Oh, man. Woo! Yeah. I swear. That was nice. You saw the rockfish came right up on him. He's off now. I think you just got your bait. Yeah, we go back down and get him. But he is. Yeah. I mean, it's a 30 pound fish like, right there with him. Is he on this time? Yeah, we got him. Yeah, this rock fish just grabbing a hold of the bait. We're live baiting here right over top of the second island. He's off again. Is he off again? He'll come back for it. Hey, this one rock fish come back and forth on this bait about five times. People have been a bigger hook. <laughs> All right, let me fish this one back here. He's had that in his mouth three times. About three times. Four. We the same fish four, four. times. He's on now. Is he on again? Him give, give him some him slack. Don't, don't give him all the resistance there. Just let him swallow. Just see if he'll swallow. This is fun rock fishing. All we're doing is we're just live baiting here. Barry's got a free line. It means no weight. Just the croaker. Looks like, oh, he just, just came off again. You got him, Barry? Not yet swallowed. Yeah. And they're kind of short striking, these, uh, these baits. So we might put a trailer hook on them. Right now, Barry's fighting his bait. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. You got it? You gonna swing on board? I got a net if you need one. Yeah, there you go, Barry. There you go. Throw him right there. Nice little rock. He had a big croaker, too, let me tell you. Get about a pound and a half croaker. This is dinner for the wife. <laughs> Love to hit. All we're doing here is just slow drifting right behind the second island with live bait, live croaker. We've got some free lines. We've had one hit on a free line. And this is the first fish we've landed and he hit on a down line 16 ounce sinker. Well, he really got that thing. Now you gotta be prepared to come out with a lot of bait when you come fishing with this. Because they'll come down there and they will take a lot of your bait. Barry sells a lot of this stuff at his store. Isn't that right, Barry? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> but they're getting them right off the bottom, right in the rocks. There we go. Got a nice little rock fish? Yeah, beautiful. Very pretty. Don't just eat? No, not at all. Live baiting over the second island. Pete, how long do you think that fish is? 18 inches. 18 inches. 18. You want dinner tonight? Uh, I think I will. Thank you, Will. All right, this one will go for Mama. We usually we usually release them this small. Now, believe it or not, what we're doing here, Barry's got a fish on, I think. Yeah, got rocks on. Yeah, you sure it's not a fish? And one thing we're doing, what, we're, what our little strategy is here for today, is to do a little rock fishing. Barry's got a fish on. But we're it's really going to be doing a big drum show. We're going to be fishing for black drum once in the evening. Now, Barry, if, if that's a rock, that rock is coming up to the top and it's got fins on it. Barry's got a rock fish on. Barry, I'll help you with this one here. But we're going to be drum fishing here in a little come while. Pete, come up to the starboard a little bit. Come on, starboard, Pete. Yeah, swim. Oh, yeah, isn't that pretty? About the same size. There you want to land it? Uh, you think it is? It looks like it. <laughs> that might be that 30 pounder we just missed. No, that's not a 30 pounder. Well, this is a lot of fun. Again, this is what we're doing when we're killing time to go black drum fishing. There we go. That's a little bit. Another rock fish. Give me a little slack here. There you go. Fish one. You got it? Yeah. Here we go. Hold on, I got it. Hold on to it, Barry. 
Good job. Now, Barry, that's your, that's your first fish of the day on the boat. You got it? Very good. Hold that thing up so we can see it, Barry. Beautiful, beautiful. Go ahead and put him in the pool. And we both need to bait up. We had doubles going on there. Whoops. Here, Barry, you take your rod. I'll take the fish. <laughs> yep, yep. Cooler is coming on. Got to get them on the bottom. There we go. Yeah, you got to get that fish. Now, we're going to show you how we're hooking these baits up. What we've got is some fresh croaker. Right here, some big, some small. And we're not at this point free lying anymore. We're just fishing right on the bottom. We've got a 16 ounce sinker. The current is not that strong here right now. Sometimes we'll have to use up to 28 ounce sinkers just to hold the bottom because this current really rips over the Bay Bridge Tunnel. Throw him over. Try not to get all your lines hooked up. And that's the rig right there. Very simple. Three-way swivel. I take them down. Believe it or not, we're only fishing about 13 feet of water. That's it. These fish are really shallow. Now, if the, if the bite slows down here a bit, what we'll do is we'll come off right off the edge of the tunnel in about 30 feet of water. And generally, that's where we'll catch the bigger rockfish. 